everyone. So it's viewer answer time and I received some questions from Carrie who is just a devoted encouraging viewer of mine and I just love her because she is always um, giving me positive feedback, giving me questions and challenging me and I love it. So she sent me a few questions. First is, if you get a couple killed together, do you do the services together? So it really is up to the family and a lot of times depends on how much of their life they've been together. Um, you know, if they've just recently maybe got married or recently become a couple, then more than likely they're going to have things separate. However, if they're a long time couple, long time married, um, then typically they'll do it together. Because what you have to remember is yes, they're a couple and then maybe they have kids that are together. However, they do have separate work groups. They have separate extended families. You know, each of them have a set of parents. Each of them have brothers and sisters and nieces, nephews and everything. And so when you have viewing and services and everyone together, so whose parents sit in front of the other person's parents? Whose family you know goes in front of the other person's family some families work well together that way and some do not i have done funerals for a few couples actually that have died together in accidents and they were always challenging just because we did want to make sure we took into account both sides of the extended family you know the kids were all on board with everything wanting to be at one time and in one place in these situations because why would you want to have two funerals for this one big loss when you're the child or grandchild? However, when you have the extended family, they may not want to be going through that process with this whole other side of the family. So it did get a little interesting with some of those nuances, but um, all in all, a lot of times it does happen together. Second question, my, um, can you send a body from one state to another for green cremation? I'm assuming you mean water cremation by that. So when it comes to state lines, every state has their own law about whether a body can come into the state unembalmed. So just recently had this question asked that if somebody died in Michigan, could that body be transported back to the Chicago area without being embalmed um, for then preparation there. Well, you have to make sure you check with every state where you would cross state lines. So we had to check with Indiana to go through Indiana and then into Illinois. So each state is different with what they allow. So yes or no, depending on what state you're going from and to is the answer common carrier though if you want to fly somebody things you get into some different situations with that um, in terms of common they call it common carrier so by train plane um, boat so any ways that you would be handing the person over to the carrier for them to then transport to be received on the other end there's different laws on that do you have a hard time knowing a person you cared for that was murdered I, well, of course, um, I think you were crazy if you didn't, I would say. Um, I've only known personally my niece that was murdered and cared for her. I have known some other people that were murdered, but I was not, I did not care for them at the time. I'm trying to think if there's anybody I'm missing in my head, but I'm thinking of some other people that have had their lives taken and um, I would, I did not care for them. I think murder is such a hard, I, I, the exact t right words to say escape me, but when you're standing caring for somebody and you know that their last moments were in fear or in pain or in question and that this was not by their choice, this is not what they wanted, and you can see bruises or scratches or things on their body because they were fighting for their life and they wanted to not have this be happening to them, especially if it was like a rape and murder. Like it's just, I try not to let my mind go there as to what they were enduring because nobody should endure that and it's horrible and I hate to 
look at them knowing that their end was that way. So all I do is then want to care for them even more and just, you know, it, it makes you want to hug and hold and especially if it's a child or a younger person um, because it's, it's horrific. Um, so it makes you just give a little extra care, I feel like, because you think about um, what was taken from them and you want to try and give something back to that person. Um, and then have you ever cared for a murder victim? Yes, too many. Um, obviously not as many as in many um, cities and um, areas, but um, you know, I've, I've definitely had my share of people who have been murdered and um, it's hard not to sometimes get caught up and watch the news and, and kind of do all that because you do have to remove yourself from what's going on and try not to let that emotional level get in there and not watching the news sometimes is a easy way for me to do that and not get caught up in the uh, everything that's going on with this case until after I have cared for the person. So yeah, but thank you Carrie for these questions. Um, I know you've had some horrible heartbreak and loss that you've experienced in your family and in your life. Um, and kudos to you for what you are doing for your family to just be there for them. Um, as always, drop questions, comments below. If you have a whole bunch of questions to submit to me to do, um, you know, a video just specifically on a bunch of questions, make sure to email them to me. It's an easier way for me to get that list. Uh, Carrie at CarrieNorthy.com. Talk to you guys soon.